All right, we're gonna go for it. All right, we're gonna we're gonna read the second story. We're gonna get these stories. We're gonna try to spin them out real quick, okay? So hang in there. This is story time. Are you guys ready for story time? I know Lady Bree is. I know, I because I, I could tell. She's ready. Spartan, I hope you're there. I hope you're ready. Mystique, I hope you guys are good. Because right now is chapter two of the three chapter series of the Meeps. You already saw the first one where they talked about him. There was some nuns in the wood. He tried to eat them all except for one because she stunk and she got away. So the legend continues. All right. This next one is, it's called The Meeps and the Morsels of Love. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. Bree, are you ready? <sighs> this is going to be the nail on the coffin. The way this story is going to head. Okay, here we go. Ready? <clears throat> In the heart of a dark and perennially, perennially misted forest, there throbbed the pulse of of an unspeakable horror, a creature known as the Meeps, with long spidery, spidery limbs and eyes that glowed like embers in the twilight. It roamed the forest with a hunger as eternal as the twisted trees themselves. The Meeps had fangs that dripped with venomous saliva. They didn't mention this in the first one, but hey, move along. And a Predile pred and a predilection of the taste of human despair. Yet, it was a lonely monstrosity, doomed to wander the rustling leaves in solitude. Where does that sound come from? Anyways. It threw me off. Solitude, never knowing the touch of companionship. One fateful evening, under the veil of silver moonlight, the Meeps caught the scent of an unfamiliar traveler, a young redhead woman named Kara, or Kara, one of those two, with locks like autumn flames and skin like porcelain. As she timidly made her way through the forest, the ghostly vines whispered her fate, and the leaves crunched in morbid anticipation beneath her boots. She wore boots, Meeps. These nuts? Yeah. <laughs> Got he. The Meeps! Got he. <laughs> the Meeps snarled in anticipation, for it had not encountered a human in the endless cycle of night and day for such a long time, salivating at the thought of a new meal. The Meeps followed Kara, remaining nothing but a shadow within shadows, waiting for the moment to strike. But as Kara settled at the base of an ancient oak, Lighting a small fire to ward off the encroaching chill. Encroaching chill. <laughs> Something miraculously unfolded. Bree, this is the twist right here. You ready? Listen closely. She peeled an orange with delicate fingers as the, and the meeps watched. Entranced by the simple beauty of such a mundane act but it was when she crinkled her freckled nose and let out a whism whimsical sneeze that the meeps Eldr that the meeps eldritch heart stirred with an emotion it had never known fascination mixed with an inexplicable yearning with a sneeze, with a sneeze come forth a bounty of boogers. Gleaming under the moon's grace like perverse glistening gems. 
unable to resist, the Meeps stealthily crept closer and when Kara wasn't looking, devoured the discarded oddities. They were ambrosia, a taste far superior than the human flesh, a taste that made the Meeps realize what it had been starving for was not the, su the substance of bodies, but the banquets of the soul. The Meeps no longer craved her for her flesh. Kara had unknowingly shackled the Meeps with a chain forged in the fires of obsession. Night after night, the Meeps followed her, savoring the glistening morsels she unknowingly provided. A tragic figure bound to her presence, yet unable to reveal itself. Kara began to sense that she wasn't alone. Whispers in the dark. The feeling of being watched and misplaced items hinted at a presence, a protector in the form of a shadow. She whispered into the night, Who are you? that watches over me. But the Meeps could not rely in hisses and growls, a language of nightmares that could never convey the tenderness now blooming in his cold heart. That's the shit you do over boogers, you know what I'm saying? One night, Kara, braver than she has been before, decided to confront her silent guardian. Under the full moon, she called out to the darkness, Show yourself. I know not whether you mean harm or solace, but I'm wary of your uncertainty. If you are there, reveal yourself to me. <laughs> the Meeps, unable to resist the siren call of her voice, stepped forth from the veil of night. Kara gasped <gasps> like that at the horror before her. Yet within her eyes, there was no fear. Only compassion. The Meeps trembled, raw emotion conflicting with its monstrous nature. Kara approached, her heart pounding, not with dread, but with something akin to connection. A-K-I-N, akin. She tentatively reached out and placed a trembling hand upon his gnarly hide. That's his butt, right? You are not alone, she uttered, for I see you. That's what she said. It's the last paragraph. And so a bond was formed, unique and terrible in its origin. The Meeps, unable to partake in her essence for fear of destroying the very thing is sought to preserve, became Kara's shadow, her guardian, her secret companion in the unlike, unlikeliest of love stories, a love born in the gloom between a, a forest creature of nightmares and a woman with the heart of a lioness. United under the ancient gaze of a moon that had seen it all. That's the end of the second one. That was... I know Brie at least smiled once. Because those morsels. That was the key ingredient to the to the eternal love. You know? Sometimes you pick your nose and it's just, there it is. Thanks for watching, dudes. For our newest video, Click here.